Good morning, everyone. My name is Jeremy. This is Joseph, and we are talking about the Wheel of Time. Um, so the Nerd Morning Show is a place where we celebrate nerd culture by talking about books, video games, uh, comics, and a bunch of other stuff. And um, the Wheel of Time is going to be produced as a show on Amazon uh, in the, this, I guess, this winter, this fall, going to be November of 2021. And I am super excited. And for that, we've been going through and reading um, the books again and discussing those a little bit. So, um, Joseph, where are you at right now? I am in chapter four of The Great Hunt. I have never gone through any Wheel of Time book in less than a week before, but I did it. (laughs) (laughs) So that's awesome. um, uh, I, I'm doing audio, um, uh, of course, but uh, I chose to to kick it up to the the two x speed, uh-huh. which I never do normally. Normally, yeah. I listen to audiobooks when I'm driving. I drive pretty constantly for work. Uh-huh. It gives my mind something to do, some entertainment sure. while I'm going for multiple hours. So yeah. I don't I don't care about the speed. Yeah, I just listen this time i'm trying to meet a goal to get them all done before the show airs on uh on amazon yeah so i've been cooking through it and it's actually been really kind of fun to go through it that fast Uh, Uh, i feel like when you go at a faster speed through a series like this massive you get to see like all the connections and how the the mastery of the telling on how things are interwoven together uh-huh. and that's just a really cool experience uh to grab yeah. some of those elements and so that's really neat it, it's been fun so yeah i i am in the room with uh, uh moraine and the omelin seat talking mm-hmm. about rand and oh my goodness he really is the dragon he's gonna uh-huh. destroy everything what have we done but we have to do it right uh, and and that, their discussions right yeah. they they're talking about how you know if they if anyone else knew uh-huh. that they were doing this and planning this that it would be catastrophic for them um yeah. but they also are firm believers that this is the right course to take yes. even though it's essentially blasphemous i think is the only word that i could really equate it to for their culture yeah treason Um, kind of yeah too yeah um but they're convinced that that is what is necessary to save the world and to let rand be and i think we're really starting to see a a start of like a shift in rand where um the first book he's kind of along for the adventure and um and by the end he's able to start to use the power uh-huh. um and it freaks him out obviously but also yeah. <laughs> he knows now that moraine um and armalin and all the Aes Sedai um members are essentially wanting and expecting things from him and he's starting to fight against expectation and that's a big yeah. big part of the intro is that shift which is uh-huh. becomes a key aspect of his character and his character growth over the yes. next several books. Yes, All right. Especially since he's also uh, Moraine has kind of stepped back a little bit. So he's is she is still she's... gonna you know gentle me or basically kill me uh-huh. or what? Or, um, or are they trying to guide me, manipulate me? Am I being used? These are the uh-huh. this is the moment where really uh, those types of concerns and questions get born and yeah. those are some of the big things that he has to wrestle with um but it, when, when he, he starts to like do that we don't get a lot of um rand actually in book three um which is amazing yeah he, it's um, kind of, it's uh, kind of interesting the little bloop bloop there he is there he is yeah uh-huh. um, until and, the very end yes and so everything that we get is kind of this like myth that he's starting to create as he's uh-huh. like making these waves of impact. But for him, um, we get these little snippets where like Perrin's in the dream world and um, we bumps across them or, or something like that. And uh-huh. we see that he's battling all these things and he's constantly in this like epic conflict. Yeah. 
yeah. um, where people are trying to manipulate him in dreams, you know, the, the forsaken and oh. um, that he's constantly trying to have this big run. And um, it's this great Exodus, but we don't really get any of it. We only get like the second hand of it. Right. And he's been here. We can tell because there were 20 weddings. Yes. Uh-huh. yes. <laughs> and these like big, big things that are going on, but we don't get, his story and i think that was fantastic because we are creating the the legend of the dragon uh-huh. and yeah. we get to see it as a legend instead of the regular human going through and having that experience yep. and obviously that we get back into a lot more in book four you know rand is a key character again um, but in book three yes. he really isn't Right? He's a side we character. You don't get him um, very much. Uh-huh. Um, and that's, I don't know, that's really interesting. But the way that he has his fears and hesitations, like you definitely see a change. But I think yes. this is the moment where you're at right now in, in book two, uh, the yeah, beginning of the it beginning, is if, beginning of, of that, that transition. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, it's exciting. I'm excited for what's coming through the rest of the great hunt Mm -hmm. uh, we get to meet the aiel for the first time we learn more about varin who is probably my favorite aes Sedai. Uh i just love her interesting (laughs) interesting um as well as more of the female characters they start going on their storyline so we get into their story a lot more and learn who they are. I'm looking mm-hmm. forward to that part of it. Yeah. Um, that Those are all really cool things. And it's amazing to see the diversity in the cast and uh-huh. uh, how we get to really dive into all these different types of characters. And um, for all of the female cast, which on the first book, I felt were kind of secondary characters. Right. Yeah, they were there. They were significant, the but they were yeah. they were just part of the group. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but in book two, you're suddenly go, oh no, these aren't just side characters. These uh-huh. are big, big characters, and they become bigger and more important throughout the story um, as it progresses. And yep. in book two, you realize this solidifies that as it's not just the boys' story. This is this whole cast that we were introduced to. Yeah. Um, all has a big, big role. Yes. Um, so you finished book one. Um, yeah. What do you think about that conclusion, that the ending of that first book? It really surprised me, especially the first time I went mm-hmm. through it. Mm-hmm. I, I just wasn't expecting that much of a climax, especially yeah. because I knew there was so much more. Mm-hmm. I, I first went through it uh, eight years, nine years ago, something like that. Yeah. Uh, so for, I was expecting more of a cliffhanger rather than a conclusion. Yeah. And then a little bit of, there's more to come, but we're Uh not there yet. Yeah. Uh, So that surprised me, but it was also really fascinating with the, the mythos of the green man, which we didn't get Mm -hmm. a lot of, but we got enough to understand that this was uh, a saint-like character, especially Mm -hmm. for the Ogier. Yes, yes. And uh, they meet him. There's the giant store of pure power Mm -hmm. for the dragon to draw on. The first time he really does Mm -hmm. a lot. So it does doing that much that fast to basically negate two of the forsaken Mm -hmm. in their first encounter. It doesn't just immediately drive him mad. Yeah. It was just clever writing the, the horn being found the broken quaint ER of the Mm -hmm. seal. There's Mm -hmm. just so many tidbits there that especially going through it again, this is my fourth time or so going through it. Yeah. It's, it's fun to have the, oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that, oh, yeah, that, where mm-hmm. we, we see what's really important and how yeah. it's set up for the future of the story. That, totally. that was really fun to, to get that again, especially with the, the eyes of seeing it again. Yeah. A little side note, uh, talking to my father-in-law about these books, mm-hmm. and he's, he, was, he loves to read. He reads 
almost as much as you do. <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. He's read a lot of books. He loves big stories, mm -hmm. but not so much the epic fantasy side. He yeah. was saying, I tried to go through it, but I, I couldn't, you know, all the different names of Trollocs, Murdral, you know, the different nations and mm -hmm. everything. He was like, I, I have to take notes. I'm like, it's a big it, world. It's a it big is. world. You have to go through it again. You really yeah. have to go through it again so yeah and i, I so i i was talking with um one of my nieces actually recently um and uh she is was reading uh excite and was loving it she's like oh this is so cool ah, big uh -huh. epic adventure all that stuff <laughs> and, and she's like now she's like i'm gonna read pride and prejudice and she's like oh this is so hard for me to read and it's it's, it, it's different a different style. beast it different is style. and it is and um Wheel of Time is a different beast. It is. It's even a different beast for um, epic fantasy. Yeah. Um, it's over 30 years old and from the initial book. Um, and that's a different time period. Um, I think uh, there were different ways and things that were being emphasized in the writing style at that time as well and what was publishable yeah. and what was not. Um, yeah. But like the pacing is a little bit different than it is now. Um, I'm not yeah. going to say slower, though I think that are people who would argue slower um there for me times. i'm just still like i <laughs> like really good energy still i don't know um mm -hmm. but like it focuses on different elements of the story yeah. and it does yeah. it in a different way than stories do now and yeah. um i you could find some people who find one um one thing very palatable and another thing less palatable even if it's like they like fantasy right and that's fair right for this um yeah. but one yeah. of the things is this is a big big epic fantasy with thousands of characters that you meet dozens yeah. of countries many nationalities with distinct cultures um or all drug. of that stuff right, right. right. yeah well, yeah I, i've seen you know an hour-long video of mm -hmm. people talking just about the wardrobe and the descriptions of the wardrobe right. in books and, so, and yeah. what's interesting is they're all like logical and functional yeah. Uh -huh. And um, well, that's something like, you know, talking about like, what do I foresee in the future in um, with the Amazon Prime uh, series is I, there's some of these things that I don't know if they will be able to really capture. Like, I hope they do. I hope so. Um, yeah. I, I might so know. Um, there with what we've seen with the cast and things like that, like um, I, 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 we know that they've like created a brand new character um and there's some there are some some uh, artistic choices and things that they've chosen to do for the show that are clearly different than they have done for um the books and that's yeah. that's fine like no right. initial like uh -huh. criticism there but like there's certain things that there were established cultures and races and um uh kingdoms and you know all these types of things are divided out and they're divided out very specifically and purposefully in the story yeah. and we may not necessarily see that in this series we maybe we will um yeah uh, but that's I, I doubt that's they're gonna amazing. do 15 seasons and take the books one i doubt they're gonna be able to do that yeah especially to tell the whole story yeah uh, I They're don't know. Gonna I mean, have to do some Game, Game of Thrones was able to do it. Um, you know, they did a, a book a kind season. Kind of. M mostly, kind mostly. Kind of. You know? Right. <laughs> Uh, until they passed where he had written, <laughs> where yes, George passed. Martin had written. Yes. And then they really go from there. Yeah. But I mean, if you wow. if you read through the first books and then you read through and you watch through the first seasons, like they pretty much go play by play, almost word for word. Um, <laughs> and they tried. Uh, I mean, they obviously added other creative elements in the in the series. Like they did a lot of things. That, but I mean, like they yeah. tried really hard to have some high veracity there. Um, here i'm like i don't know are they going to do a little bit more creative license or not those are questions that we had right. no answers to obviously but i'm just yeah. kind of like reading through i'm going you know what i think this is something that's important to me and this thing's this could shift and change like as i'm going through it i'm kind of like thinking yeah. about it and that's just kind of what poses some of those thoughts yeah yeah the the one i hope they get truest is the ideal I, yeah. I just love the ideal they're just my favorite fictional culture yeah it just go going in and diving yeah. into that culture was something so unique 
for me. Yeah. Um, and like, you know, we're both redheads and they're uh-huh. <laughs> predominantly redheaded um, people. Um, I think they do mention that there are a couple of blonde people in their grouping. Yeah. Um, but, but I mean, it's, they, they clearly look white hair, fair way. skin, uh-huh. warrior um, nation. Yeah. And that's cool. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, I don't know. Like, um, I, what's fascinating uh, with them is they are uh, tribal in nature. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. And they uh, also are very, very uh, developed and yeah. as a culture but they are tribal uh, and i think a lot of times we see um these tribal like uh cultures and they're underdeveloped and they need to be like uh yeah trained and the shown the yeah and then yeah. this is like not that at all right. they, but it's they assumed are, everyone it is assumed, outside right? assumes that but you get into so, the culture and you're like wow these yeah. people are the most civil they have the they have a certain like way of life and ideal and they yep. live to that and it's so important to them and yeah. it's very noble and also uh-huh. like they're like their wise ones are very wise like they are right? you know and they, yeah. you know, the whole culture is just very dynamic very amazing and that was really really cool to see because i don't think um that's done as well in any other the story that I can think of that's a fantasy. Yeah, the only one that comes close is Klingons. Uh-huh. So <laughs> uh, there are others who are more expert in that yeah. than I am. Yeah. But that's but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um for me right now, I am in book four. Um my favorite. Oh uh, <sighs> it's just when I think of Rand, I think of him like in the beginning of book four yeah that, the first that, that's kind of what i like i mean he grows and changes and shifts and has a bunch of yes. different experiences um but when i like think of him i think of him that at that moment and it's a tough place for because he's very lost yeah um and he's trying very hard to take control of himself but he's also like thrust in this position of starting to like be a ruler he's essentially a king um and that's a very different place that he was even in the book just book just previous where he was a traveler one day to the next right yeah Uh um because i mean he's you get this guy who's you know playing music for his food and we only know this because of the people the townspeople who he runs across and oh yeah he played music for all the weddings and like things like that Uh like um but you know, he's this vagabond, really, um, <laughs> to a king. And uh-huh. that transition is just tremendous. And yeah. and he's really getting, like, paranoid and all these other types of things are creeping in. And I know that's, like, the point where some people uh, search, like, oh, I don't really love Rand. Or, like, you know, he's annoying or frustrating or trouble. I mean, I've heard, you know, things like that. Because he's very troubled. But also, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, going right from book three and really thinking about the experiences, like, he's literally tortured every night in his dreams. Every single night he's battling. Uh, That's traumatic. And he's going oh, yeah. to be troubled. And he's <laughs> got all of these responsibilities thrust on him that he's not really prepared for. Yep. And the only people he can, uh, he can, like, turn to to guide him are also people he intrinsically cannot trust even with moraine like uh, he just cannot trust because he knows right. they have ulterior motives and there he is a means not the end and he yeah. feels that and, and moraine's very open about that he's like you're yeah. going to go to the you know and you're going to save the world like this yep. is your job and i'm going to get <laughs> you there if you are bruised tattered torn and destroyed i don't care um Nope. If I can do this it without is, that, that's better. But uh, this is the path that you must go, and I'm going to get you to that end. And uh, um, he is willing, at, at that point. But, he yeah. appreciates the truth that that yes. she presents at the beginning of the fourth book. Yeah, he, he's like great, and that's when he opens up to her also, and is at least willing to listen. But yeah, he yeah he's 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 right? getting getting to that point um where yeah. I'm at he's not there yet but I, okay. yeah uh-huh. um but yeah oh whew. um <laughs> but like I don't know it's it's a very interesting spot where he's at at this very moment that I'm at yeah. and yeah. um yeah and he he does he does 
uh, starts to, to grow and, and open up. But like, this is, I think I've, the spot where I've heard some people say, this is when it like gets good. Like, I mean, I love this series from the very beginning all the way through, right? But it's like, you know, really, really picks up here. And I've also heard people say this is where they drop down as well. So I, I feel like this is a divide moment where maybe yeah. it's because of their approach with what they expect the hero to be like in a story. And Rand is not like that. He's purposely uh. not that. <laughs> if you look, listen um, to any conversations that um, was had by the writer, um, this was what uh-huh. the things that he was exploring. So he doesn't think right. that, you know, he'd be like, oh, let's go off and Let, save sure, the world. Sure, let's do it. Okay. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, he said yeah. that one of the things in a comment is that he would think that they would try to like, you know, if, if someone said, hey, let's go and save the world, they'd go like, oh yeah, no problem. And they'd sneak at the back door. Like that's what right. he thinks. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and this is the resistance that we get and the struggle that we get. And I just, I just love it. So yeah. Yeah. that is where I am at. And I'm excited to keep on going through this and going through that with you as well and having these discussions. Um, for so you guys- fun. Yes. Um, for everyone watching, um, out of these like couple of books, what are your favorite moments? What are the things that you guys have about the impressions about the main characters or things like that? We haven't yet really like delved into things like the journeys through that um, Perrin or Matt have gone through. Um, Perrin gets a big experience, I think, in book two. He really starts to like he go starts, through his quest. Yeah, his... Um, Matt, uh, you're getting close to the beginning of Matt's journey. Yeah, I so, feel like Matt yeah. really gets to his beginning of the quest in book three um, is really where he starts out. Um, and yeah, like all these characters, we still have so many people to talk about. And it's oh. crazy good, but we've got, you know, lots more. Um, so yeah, everyone stick around for more videos as well, because we're going to be doing more discussions like this. Um, also, we've got more Nerd Morning content um, at Nerd Morning on places like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, more. Um, also, there's a gaming channel where I do game streams, and uh, that's here on YouTube, Nerd Morning Gaming. Also, there's a new merch store. We've got t-shirts, stickers, mugs, um, base masks uh, for um, people who need new ma- masks, you know, with a new you know, season of mask wearing that we're getting Yay. into um, and uh, other things as well. So that's um, nerdmorning.com slash merch. And you can check that stuff out there. Thank you everyone so much for joining in. Uh, Joseph, thank you so much for your thoughts and input. Oh, oh man, yeah. so good. Um, and we will talk to everyone again next time.